In terms of those ancient pathways that the elephants would have traveled between Addo and Eden, do we know where they are? Well, we don't have specific evidence on where the pathways would have been, but if you think of rivers, they are natural corridors. So, for example, um, on the other side of the Bavianskloot, there's the Groot Rafir Kloot, and that would be a perfect example of where elephants would have found pathways uh, between the coastal areas and between the Karoo. So, yeah, nature makes its own natural corridors through river systems. In terms of the last elephant in Neisner Forest, what are some of your thoughts about what that shows us and tells us? Well, it's incredibly sad. She is a matriarch with no herd. And so one wonders, you know, what is she longing for? She even at night for comfort and this is not anthropomorphizing, I don't think, because we know how emotionally intelligent elephants are. They visit their grave sites. She leans up against a logger for comfort because it's about the same size as her. So there's this deep loneliness. And I think that we as a species really need to tap into that, that longing that she has for an awareness of, of what we are doing to species and other animals that are cognizant of what is happening to them. So I'm sure, <laughs> and I can't guess for her and I can't speak for her, but I'm sure she is longing for a herd to be a matriarch over. It's quite interesting. She's actually the same age as me. So mm. if you think she grew up in this area and so did I, you know, that our, our life journeys and what has happened to her, I, I have my family. I, I am leaving a legacy for my family. What is she leaving? She has no family to leave a legacy for. So in that way, she really has become an emblem for Eden to Addo and what can happen to species when they are cut off from the rest of their kin, when they are cut off from other ecosystems that they need in order to thrive. She's become forest adapted, but you know, she would have migrated or her species would have migrated long ago and experienced many different biomes and ecosystems. And that's also what is amazing about the Eden to Addo corridor is that it traverses all these different biomes. So we go from the coastal biome on the Robo Coastal Corridor and then into the forest, which there is so little left of in South Africa, and then the exquisite Feinbos, and then you're going into uh, succulent Karoo, and Nama Karoo, and then into the thicket around Addo. So there are these very diverse biomes. In fact, there is no other corridor of this size with as much diversity as the Eden to Addo corridor, which makes it really unique in the world. You've said the Robo Coastal Corridor has been a success. Describe it to us. So the Robo Coastal Corridor is a success story because there are passionate landowners who see the vision and this narrow strip of land along these coastal cliffs is literally the last lifeline for Roburg Nature Reserve. It's a perfect example of how if there was not the corridor, this peninsula would be a cut off island and would die ecologically because there would be no opportunity for animal movement to disperse seeds. You know, the baboons disperse the seeds for the fainbos, um, the tortoises are dispersing and pollinating there are all you know all kind the birds etc for example uh, a sunbird will not fly over a large stand this is a sunbird we actually hear right now <laughs> uh, a sunbird will not fly over a large stand of alien vegetation like black wattle and so their area will become smaller and smaller and then there's inbreeding and and the proteas which they are pollinating also then there's not transferal of genetic material so it literally is a lifeline for the Roberg Nature Reserve. And so why does it success is that the land has been linked because what we do when we are working with establishing a corridor is, is you create stepping stones and then slowly link those together and slowly fences can come down between the different land pockets. And, and so this is what is happening here. And why it is also successful is that it also shows that 
farmers can be productive and active within a protected environment. So there is a dairy farm, Cambrogi dairy farm, within the corridor that is still functional and very successful. We drank the milk this morning and uh, and yet part of the land is, is protected environment and forms part of the corridor. So it just shows how agriculture and income streams can still occur within a corridor. What role does water play in conservation? Well, if you think of it, this Kirbom's River is the lifeblood for a whole town. The Plettenberg Bay area is solely dependent on this river. So if the river is not functional and not flowing, then there's no water security for a, a whole town and all the townships and surrounding areas. So yeah, it literally is the lifeblood. How vital is it to create these spaces and preserve the nature that we have? We're actually reaching quite a few ecological tipping points. We have exceeded planetary boundaries on six of the nine planetary boundaries. So we're on the brink of ecological collapse. And so these corridors are not just pretty green, nice to have. They're actually essential to our survival because without these functioning corridors, everyone downstream of the ecosystem or living within the ecosystem doesn't then have access to clean water, fresh air, healthy soils. Our survival into the future depends on these functioning corridors which allow functioning ecosystems.